Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Tow Mater's Garage, the only garage in the country that don't have doors, but she got a roof. Anyway, yeah, can we say yuck? Well, yins all remember the little wreck that uh, caused some issues of this truck and caused this bed, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, it ripped this axle clear off. Pow, gone. History. I jerked this axle out of a junker, throwed it in here, and well, here's what you get. I've been nursing it by filling it full of grease, just keeping grease in it to keep hurting my stump back there. And this is what you get. You get a greasy, nasty mess. This is also a used drum. She don't look so hot. She ain't bad, but she ain't good. Um, the other side actually has a new drum I put on it uh, when I done the brakes on this truck. I put new drums and everything on the back up, but it destroyed uh, my new drum. It bowed out the center of it. Anyway, that's side the point. We're not going to worry about that. I'm not going to cry over um, broke eggs or whatever else, but I'll buy a new drum later on. I'm also going to clean up these brake shoes, um, you know, and use them for now. This is just to stop a grease leak. You know, I can clean these up. You can spray them down with brake clean, scrub them down with a little bit of sandpaper. Everything will be good. As far as getting the grease out of here, out of the inside of this, as far as wet dripping grease, yes, but as far as getting it cleaned perfectly clean, it's not really a, of any major importance. It's not going to hurt anything. But what I'm going to do is show you how to get this axle out. I ain't going to do it in real time. I ain't going to do it live. I can tell you right now, this bearing is gone. Yeah, bearing shot, um, which ain't good, but that's side's point. There's four nuts. This is the same with any Ford truck. Torino, Maverick, Comet, Mustang, anything that uses this rear end that looks like that, okay? Car, truck, whatever. Um, all you actually have to do is you take these four nuts out. Pretty simple. Take these four nuts off and this axle will come right off. There's a nice little supplied hole here. Granted, it's hard to do it in one hand. You turn it, line it up, turn it, line it up, et cetera, et cetera. That's what you do. You just turn it, you take it out, and uh, when I get those nuts off, I'll show you some more. Okay, boys and girls, you take those four nuts off and the axle comes out, and your axle looks like, focus, darn you, it looks like this. It just pulls right out. Well, crapola. Come here, boy. Focus, please. Lord have mercy. But anyway, right there's what your axle looks like. See your bearing, you see that big wide collar to the left of the bearing? That has to come off. Um, there's a couple different ways of doing this. There's heating and popping it off. There's cutting. Some people cut through it with like a die grinder with a cutoff wheel. Some people use a torch. Some people just heat it and pry it off, etc., etc. There's a bunch of different ways of getting this off. Um, as far as the race, I've already removed my race. This is how I removed my race. I just notched it at the bottom very, very carefully until I got almost through it. I didn't actually go all the way through the race. Got it hot and put a big slit in it which relieved enough tension for me to pop it out without a slide hammer. I actually popped it out with crowbar. Um, you can slice all the way through it if you know how to use a torch and you're not going to actually hurt this housing. I did uh, put a few little gouges in my housing with my crowbar. It's no big deal. Um, I'll massage those down with some emery cloth and everything's good. It ain't really gouges, just little nicks, little burrs where the race goes in against. It's not a big deal as long as you knock the burrs down. Um, like I said, this is Redneck 101. Um, I've actually got a slide hammer, but I didn't particularly want to go dig it out, so this was actually quicker. And I'm going to remove the bearing the same way from this. And of course, they have to be pressed back on. And you know, that's pretty self explanatory. You press them back on, it's not no big deal. But anyway, I may show you that and I may not. So. That's how you get the axle out to replace the seal. The seal is actually, yeah, if you'll forgive the light, the seal is right there against this retainer plate. And there's your bearing and there's your retainer collar for your bearing, et cetera, et cetera. That's how that works. So anyway, you gotta destroy the bearing to get it off. Uh, there's not really any other way. Plus that bearing's bad anyway, so it really don't matter. But like I said, I may show you the putting it on, I may not. See y'all. Well, boys and girls, starting to rain on me, but I cut uh, I cut this off, okay? Right here, if you notice, is the outer band. Right there's the band of the um, 
to the actual bearing. You got to destroy the bearing, and of course, I actually nicked the seal at the same time. My cap, retainer cap, is a little warm. It's out there in a the driveway. It's raining, so it's cooling off. But um, all I'm going to say is the reason I did not show this process, and I'm not going to show this process, is because if you don't know how to use a torch, you do not need to try to do this. You can destroy your axle and 31 spline 9 inch Ford truck axles are not cheap so I'm not going to be the reason for you to destroy an axle so that's why I didn't show it but you get the point you cut you don't even necessarily have to cut all the way through you just got to relieve the tension you got to cut partially through you can cut them halfway a lot of times hit them with a good sharp chisel and they'll break you can cut them on both sides halfway through and pop them with a chisel and they'll break off in two pieces there's different ways of doing this but like I said yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't need to be doing it this way. So take it to somebody and let them do it. Um, somebody's going to say, well, you should have pressed, you should have done, you should have done, you should have done. Well, there is different ways of getting this off. My opinion, taking torch, cutting it off, is the way I've always done it. Um, there's different ways. Some people cut them with a grinding wheel and then hit them with a chisel and break them. Like I said before, there's different ways. But with the torch, if you know how to use the torch, you know how to, how to harness the heat, and you know how to use it, you will not hurt your axle. Right there's my axle where I cut. You can see, you can see the slag marks, but as you notice, there is absolutely no cut marks in that axle. I did not cut the axle. The axle a whole, takes a whole lot more heat to get the axle hot enough to where the oxygen will blow it out. So, you know, there is tricks to the trade, there's tricks to doing things, and like I said, this is a trick. This is a field way of doing it in the field. Um, there's actually ways of putting this back together without ever stepping foot into a machine shop or a press. It actually involves a piece of pipe and a fence post driver. I've done this on a trail. I have done this and fixed them before. It's, um, you know, you can easily bust a wheel bearing. Or, you know, it's, it sounds stupid, but you can actually bust one. I've done this before. But you can use a piece of pipe and fence post driver. As long as you got something that fits snug against it and it's not going to hurt it and something to way of driving it, you can drive it on just as easy. You just can't uh, bash against the cage part of the bearing. You gotta stay on the inner race. It's, you know, you know bearings and this, that, and the other. But anyway, enough said with that. Um, like I said, if you ain't got the, ain't got a press, a torch, and the know-how, you probably don't need to do this, but if you've got a leaky wheel seal on a Ford 9 inch, um, at least the later ones, this is how you have to do it. The earlier ones actually had a seal up inside, the smaller axles, smaller axle shaft, shall I say. Um, they had a seal up inside like the 60s Mustangs and stuff like that. There's a seal. It's, it rides. I'm wanting to say that that seal rides right where that little hook is, right in there. It rides about there, maybe just a little further back, but it rides on the shaft itself. And the bearing is actually a sealed bearing. Um, if you actually run into one, you take yours apart, and yours is a sealed bearing, and you want to see how to get it apart. Go look at our Peaks channel. Look up um, something about rat rod and wheel bearing replacement. He's got a video series on one of those. It's a 57 Ford rear end that's under his rat rod. So he'll show you how to show you how to get that and accomplish. It's basically the same thing I've done, except he did use a grinder. It's basically the same principle, but it's a sealed bearing. It's got the seal for the grease actually rides up in here, and this bearing is sealed, unlike this one, which is an oil bath bearing. Anyway, see y'all.